he was a bartender. So he was, he actually met my mom. She, my dad saw my mom with a, with a friend. I really don't know the whole story. All I know is that. I really don't know the whole story. Well, I would say my mom was both like my mother, my father, and my sister, my grandma. She played like all the roles because she was a single mom. Um, she was always the one to, you know, pick up the pieces when we would get upset or something bad would happen. And she was always the one to, you know, take us out on vacations and stuff like that and bring home the money and make sure that we're all taken care of. She was also kind of like the, the mother in the neighborhood because she was taking care of a lot of the, the neighbor's children. She had like a little daycare center after school. Uh, so a lot of the neighbors will, will come right from school to my house and wait for their parents to pick him up, you know, after they come from work. We escaped on a boat out of Vietnam from a war-torn communist uh, country and escaped. We weren't doing great in Argentina. We had more opportunities in Spain. So we decided to move there. My mother was working while my father was studying to, for, the, for a public job. Then my father passed the test and we started. They started having more, more, ch more children. My mom and I are so close in age that we've always been like, she's not just my mom, she's also like my best friend. So we do everything together. <laughs> my mother never went to school. She was not educated, but she was street smart. Before I left to school, she always asked me if I want anything special. And even if it was hard and we didn't have any money on that time, she always managed to put that on, on my plate. She could not get education for herself. And so it was terribly important to her. It was almost like it wasn't her dream for her kids to be educated. It, we were her dreams. She was living the life she wanted to live through us. I could see by hearing, tasting, and smelling and touching. So um, I could hear what my mom is doing. I see my mother's role pretty good because she also has to help my grandma because she's also visually impaired. That's one of my favorite moments is when I'm in the kitchen with her because we get to, we get to cook. At first it was more of a burden, more of a, like, not me again. What about, what about our brothers or my sisters? Why can't they help? As I've grown older, I realized the value of that because I love to cook. I love the food that she makes. I love the food that now I can make because of that. And, the ability to taste different things, to see you know the balance of the dishes and all of that. So, those are my fondest memories are when we're in the kitchen together. She wouldn't make wake me up for school, and then I wake up late and I was like, Ima, like, Mom, what's up? What happened? And she was like, Oh, I just wanted you to come with me to work today. She used to drive a lot for work, like throughout all of Israel, and and I would just not go to school because my. It was weird, like what mom tells you don't go to school, come with me to work. But these was the, the best days and like the times I spent with her just just being her and I together. She wasn't one of the pampering moms. Um, she was more like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Um, which almost made her fe feel like a villain in the little family. And my father was a nice guy who would, he would say yes to pretty much anything. Um, and whatever she was pushing me to do was the right thing to do. So if I'd only followed my father, I would have ended up somewhere else. When I got married and had my kids, helping with raising my kids, cook for us, do the driving, the shopping, she was always there. My mother's helping me go through st stress problems by putting me in yoga therapy. We're talking about anxiety through grades, getting upset because people bully me. I think that's how is the mother to her child when she loved the child, that she come to be a tiger, she will get everything for her child. And that's how I'm learning that from her. 
It's, I do for the same thing for my kids. I go on fire for my kids. We pulled into this um, gas station and she walked into the counter to get us a hamburger. And they told her that she had to go to the back door. And she didn't understand that. And she was like, well, why do I have to go to the back door? And here I am now, you know, why can't I be served? You no, know, she was like, I'm, I'm just like the rest of you guys, you know, I'm not going to, and there was no, there was some bad words, but she, you know, she's not going to the back door. And they served her. We're doing a dark time in American history of uh, segregation. She uh, went on and went to college. She uh, and uh, obtained a bachelor's degree. She showed me that uh, anything's possible, especially here in America. She's very, very skilled linguistically. She has um, a PhD, which she acquired later in life. Um, but she, she loves to communicate, and it doesn't matter whatever language that is. She was working more with, with us, with me and my brothers, educating us taking care of us and coordinating the house. Uh, so I remember there was a moment where, where I saw that she really wanted to work again. And, and that was hard because my mother is really ambitious. As a teenager, you're still trying to figure out who you are and you're still a child yourself, a kid, sort of going into transition, being a, an adult. And then there comes a child that you have to take care of and you can't, you don't even know how to take care of yourself really yet. Nights without sleep and being so young and seeing all your friends go out and party and have fun and wanting to do that, but at the same time having this child that you love so much and that you don't wanna, you wanna take care of and it's this unconditional love that you've never had before. Very, very challenging in, you know, in, in our society of um, what, is, what is the role of a woman? What is the role of a girl? Right? What is the role of a wife? What is the role of a, of a woman in Vietnam struggling as well as what is the role of a woman in the U.S. trying to raise seven children and, and also trying to make ends meet as well as trying to to finally understand who she is. I, I talk to my mother like twice a day, and if I have a decision to make, I would run it by her. Um, then she would talk a little bit about my father, how he's not doing what he's supposed to do kind of a thing. Are you doing good? What kind of incomes are you having? And what if that goes wrong? <laughs> so, yeah, she, she knows I need time in order to achieve my goals here, but uh, of course she's concerned. She's a mother, right? She's concerned about the tomorrow and what can go wrong. So yeah, I think the main concern for her is uncertainty. She was just, she was walking in to do something else and she didn't see me. And then she saw me from the corner of her eyes and I was crying, I was in the corner crying and she didn't understand why I was crying. And then she sat down and asked me questions. And it was the first time I kind of told her about you know, the way I really felt about this girl and how, how, um, how, how hard it was for me. So she, she was shocked because she, I never really showed her that, that part of my personality. But what I loved about her is that she didn't judge me or anything like that. She was just very comforting. And then at the end, she just gave me real advices, you know, how, how I should just look at the big picture and this could be an opportunity. And, you know, I've always wanted to go and travel and do those things. And, so she put things in perspective for me and it helped me deal with it. It really did. So I never told her thank you. We always try to help each other. Like for instance, she's helping me get through blindness and I'm helping her get through, mm. I'm helping her get through diabetes too. I hope for her that she gets to be with her, um, my grandmother and her mother a lot more because she's in England right now um, for going for a week to see my grandparents. Um, but I just hope that um, she'll get to spend a lot of time 
with them before they pass away. My my mom and dad didn't want to be together anymore, so now I'm sad that they're not together. Yes, so yes. when I'm with my mom, I'm sad for, for, for my dad, and when I'm with my dad, I'm sad for my mom. There's a lot of shame that happened because of the the complexity of the divorce and, and the drama that unfolded with that. All seven children ended up living with my father, and so my mother lived with lots of guilt. Dealing with her husband, which was an alcoholic, and he was very abusive to her and, and us kids. You know, she persevered and she went on through with it, you know, until she couldn't take it anymore. Um, and she got the courage to leave. At 18, I went to Dublin, which was 100 miles away from where I was born. I then went on to move to London and to Los Angeles, each a little bit further away. Um, and I felt like we got stronger and got closer the further I moved away, ironically. She didn't really understand me, and I didn't really understand her. But it wasn't until we had a breakthrough about four years ago on Thanksgiving when I finally asked her the question of, of does she understand what self-love is? And when she revealed to me, and, and very openly and honestly, that she didn't know and understand what that meant, so from that point on, we developed a closer relationship of love and of, of friendship because I asked her um, from that day forward to not see me as a son, a, her, her 38, 39 years old son at that time, but to see me as a friend so that we can talk, that we can be open with each other, that we can not try to control each other, or, um, but actually to communicate as good friends. Even when I was really, really young, we used to have like adult serious conversations. And that's something, you know, I feel like today I, I, I don't know, I respect myself more. I have more self-confidence just because she always made me feel like I'm, I'm there. I'm in her level. And she was like this big shot that I was looking up to and it, it didn't matter because we're like equal. She always taught me to go out into the world, to seek adventure, to discover what it is that you're passionate about. And it's something that I will always be grateful for. Uh, why not is one of the questions that she asks all the time. Um, I tend to ask this question now, why not? Um, because she came from such adverse background um, and she was able to do what she was able to do by asking this question all the time. Well, if I got a C, it was always okay, but you could have studied harder and got a B. If I got a B, it was always you could study harder and got an A. Uh, and uh, when I graduated from high school and told her I was going to college, she looked at me and says, I don't know how you're going to make it. Uh, you only have a C average. But when I graduated from college, I cooked a big Caribbean meal for my mother, and I invited her over, and I says, guess what, Mom? I graduated like you did, but I'm still a C student. <laughs> I would like to tell her that she's the best mom in the world. Well, usually on Mother's Day, we make a breakfast in bed. And that's probably what we're gonna do this year. My mom's the best mom ever, and I would never change her ever. Ima, קיבלתי את ההזדמנות המיוחדת הזאת לאחל לך יום האם שמח מול המצלמה. את האימא מספר אחד, את יכולה להיות דוגמה לאיך אימא צריכה להיות. ואיזה כיף, איזה כיף לדבר עלייך ולחלוק את האהבה שלי אלייך ואת מי שאת ומה שאת עם אנשים אחרים. תודה, תודה על הכל. אוהב אותך המון. I would like to tell her thank you for my life because I'm learning a lot and that's keep me strong going through from lots of things in my life. It's because of her, because she gave me that strength. I had the happiest childhood. I'm very content and I love you very much and I'm so grateful for everything you are and everything you have been and continue to be for me. For making me the woman that I am and just to know that there's no one in this world better than you. Con muốn má vui vẻ 
sống lâu lâu tuổi sống các cuộc đời mà má muốn má đừng có lo má chỉ là sống vui vẻ thôi lil um fil alam kullum nitmanna lakum eid eid karim wa kullu sana antum bi khair wa sihha wa salama wa shukran 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 bizzaf bizzaf wa ana tan 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 habbak bizzaf bizzaf mama alhabiba shukran mama Puedo tener toda la fama del mundo, puedo ganar todo el dinero que haya, eh, puedo dedicarte todo el tiempo que tú quieras, pero creo que nunca podré devolverte todo lo que has hecho por mí y por nosotros. Eh, así que desde el fondo de mi corazón quiero agradecerte todo, todo. Muchas gracias mamá, te quiero. Mãe, eh... Eu realmente espero um dia poder dividir o que eu tenho com você, com os meus filhos. É, te amo muito e eu sou muito grata por tudo que você fez por mim e por eu estar aqui agora, nesse lugar onde eu estou com você por perto, por todas as mudanças na minha vida e por você estar sempre, sempre, sempre do meu lado. Eu sou muito, muito, muito grata por isso, de verdade. É, eu te amo muito e eu te espero muito ser uma mulher ao seu, né, ao seu nível, onde você está agora, eu, eu te admiro demais. Você é muito forte e é, você me inspira todos os dias para ser igual a você. Te amo. Feliz Dia das Mães. <música>